Hopefully this is clear enough to everyone. On the left, I have my activity log. So this is going to be the template that you're going to be given. And on the right, I have my exam paper. So this is the 2022 past paper. I believe this was for January. Yeah, January 2022. What's going to happen now? I'm going to work through activity one. And the first part of activity one is to actually do your planning. It's going to be your Gantt chart. But let me quickly read through activity one. Activity one, task planning and system design changes. You are advised to spend no longer than 1.5 hours for this activity. Now, this 1.5 hours is for the entire thing. For activity one, you're going to keep going back and forth, back and forth. The reason I say this, when you finish the Gantt chart for activity one and you move on to activity two, when you finish activity two, you're going to come back to activity one, but you won't be looking at the Gantt chart section, which is this section here. What you're going to be looking at is the log. So this is going to be a daily log or a session log, whatever you want to call it. And this is where you're going to come and fill stuff in every single day. And as I've said in previous videos, let me zoom out. If you have four sessions or four days, you're supposed to have roughly four of these logs. So hopefully that makes sense. But let me jump into start looking at the Gantt chart. So at the start of the task, create a short project time plan or a Gantt chart and use it to monitor your progress throughout the rest of the task and make any adjustments as required. During the other activities, two to five, you should record in activity one section of your electronic task booklet, what you did in this session, details of any issues encountered in this session and solutions discovered, action points for the next session. So this is essentially your template and you follow these points and that's how it's done. Now, the first thing we're supposed to do is to go through and make our Gantt chart. It says it here. The Gantt chart is very, very simple. And again, we get the times from the exam paper. So I'm going to scroll down to on the right hand side is my exam paper. You guys are going to have yours printed, but because obviously I couldn't show my printed version, I'm going to use um, the screen instead. I'm going to scroll down to activity one. Now, for this first part, you don't even need to read anything. I do suggest you read it at some point, obviously, but let's get the Gantt chart done very very quickly it's the easiest thing so go all the way down on the paper where it says activity one and the only thing we need to grab from activity one at this point is the time and it says here you are advised to spend no longer than 1.5 hours on this activity that's activity one activity two another 1.5 hours activity three 2.5 hours activity four 2.5 hours activity five 1.5 activity six 2.5 now, there are a couple of ways that this can be done. I'm going to do the way I prefer. And what I like to do, I like to go to Excel. So simply open any spreadsheet program that you or your school is using. I'm going to go to a blank document or a blank spreadsheet. I'm going to drag this to the side here because I'm going to still be using this side over here. And you're going to want to put in the name of the activities on the left or on the right. It really doesn't matter whichever you prefer. But I think it makes more sense to have it on the left. And you're going to have the, the times for, for the activity at the very top. So the way I'm going to do this, I like skipping one because I know that this is going to be labeled for times. So I'm going to come down to the second one here. Let me zoom in. Hopefully that's clear enough. And in this first one, so A2, I'm going to put activity one. You can type activity two, three, four, five, and six here, but I'm going to be lazy. And I simply click on the first one move my mouse to where the very bottom right hand edge of that cell is once it turns into that black x or, or that black um, reticule or that black cross simply click and hold i'm still holding my mouse down i'm going to drag down one and as you can see it says activity two down another one down another one down another one down another one that's all my activities from activity one to activity six done it's just as easy to type them in or to copy and paste that first one in and change the number one, two, three, four, five, six. But that's just another way to do it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my timings. Now, let me extend this for this one. Some people prefer to do hour one, hour two, hour three, four, five, six. That's perfectly fine. If that's what you prefer to do, go ahead and do that. For me, I like it slightly different. I like to put it in 30 minute jumps because it's a lot easier to show what's happening, in my opinion. So at the very top here, I'm going to do 0 0.5. That's my first half an hour. I'm going to do 1.0. Then I'm going to do 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.5. 1.
I'm going to do 2.0 or 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5, 9, 9 9.5, 10, 10.5, 11, uh, 11.5, and then finally we have 12. Now this has carried our screen all the way across and as you can see, I'm going to have to scroll across. And a very easy way to fix this. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I like seeing 7.5 and 8.0. This is not something you have to do, but this is just something I like to do. So I'm going to increase my decimal place. It adds two zeros on, e on each of them or two decimal places. Then I'm going to decrease it by one and it gives me my 0 0.5, then my 1.0, so on and so forth. I actually go to the very top. I click on B, for example, then I click and hold and drag it all the way across until all my headings. So the actual headings themselves are highlighted, not just the cells. Once that's done, I can move my mouse, my cursor, in between any two of these. So as you can see here, I've got S on the left, T on the right. I'm going to put my mouse in the middle of that until it, it changes from being a downward pointing arrow until it turns into a black cross. Then I simply double click inside that section. And as you can see, all of that has now shrunken down to whatever it is to fit those numbers in. So this is my template kind of finished. What I'm going to do next is simply figure out how much time is needed for each activity and highlight and fill in the colors. So I'm going to go back to my exam paper, which is here. And it told me that I should spend roughly 1.5 hours on activity one. So for me, I know the first half an hour is going to start here. Then that's one hour. Then that's an hour and a half, 90 minutes, hour and a half done. I like the color blue, so I'm going to highlight this in blue and that's it. That's my hour and a half done for activity one. I'm going to go back to activity two, read your exam paper. This is all from the exam paper. This is nothing special. This is all information that's been given to you already. Activity two says 1.5 hours as well. I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet. Now I know I need to start here. Activity two, 1.5 hours goes out to here and I'm going to highlight again and simply color that in. You can choose any color you want. It really, really doesn't matter. I just like the color blue, so I'm choosing blue. Go back, read activity three. Now activity three says 2.5 hours. This is one of the reasons I chose the half an hour chunks instead because it's much easier to represent half an hour than it is to represent an hour because all I have to do is multiply that by five. So I know that I need uh, one, two, three, four, five cells, let's say, and that's my two and a half hours there finished. And I color that in, go back to activity four, scroll down, or you on your paper, you need to just skip the page maybe. And activity four says 2.5 hours. 2.5 again is going to be the same five cells highlighted in. I go there and I highlight, that's activity four. Activity five says 1.5 hours. Okay, fine. Activity five starts here again. And again, I'm just, I'm just filling in the information as I see it on the exam paper. I'm not doing anything special. Uh, what was that one? That was 1.5. So that's going to be three cells filled in. Highlight. And the last one we know is going to be five. So that's 2.5 hours for the very last activity, activity six. I highlight the last five cells. I do that. And that is your Gantt chart, the initial Gantt chart plan finished. The, it, again, I say initial because you're going to have to do two Gantt charts or you're going to have to combine them into one. I prefer to do two because it's very, very clear and very easy to do two of them. So now I've done this, I'm going to screenshot this and put it into my document. So there are two ways we can do a screenshot, right? I'm going to show you the quickest, maybe the easiest way. On my keyboard, I'm going to press uh, the Windows button, bring up the start menu. I'm going to type SNIP. If you have Windows 10 and Windows 11, this should be there. It's called snipping tool. So let me show that one more time. I press um, my start button. My start menu is not there. I press start and I type in the search bar S N I P for snip. The snipping tool option should come up. I'm going to click on that. It's going to come up with this window here. And all I'm going to do is click on where it says new. 
and my screen goes dark as you can see and I'm going to simply highlight the section I want to copy so simply move your cursor to where you want to start click and hold on your mouse and drag it to where you want it to stop and that's it let go when you've highlighted the area you want that's done that's automatically been copied so only thing I need to do now is to actually go to my word document the template I've been given the template I've created and I need to paste that in there so let me make this bigger I'm going to press enter here just to move down I'm going to right click and I'm going to go paste if I can find paste where's paste here we go paste and that's it that's my initial task plan this is my initial plan this is how I think this is what I intend to do that's the whole purpose of planning right let me just shrink this and under here I'm well it's already na labeled initial task plan when we come to do the second one we can do exactly the same thing we can simply name the other one um, actual task plan actual task plan I'll put that there now so when I come to do it I'm gonna have another Gantt chart but the timings might be slightly different so rather than it taking 1.5 hours let me go back to my Gantt chart actually rather than it taking 1.5 hours to do activity one it might only take me one hour right so what I could do I could copy all of this I could paste it down here and just have both of them on the same spreadsheet and when I'm finished I can say actually activity one only took me two hours or sorry one hour so I can maybe only highlight these two so let's label let's leave that one red let's let's take that last one out and label it as white so it gets rid of that space activity two Hmm. it didn't take me an hour and a half it took me two hours instead so let me highlight this and let me label this one blue then right but I'm going to come back to activity one I'm going to keep coming back to activity one so I'm going to ignore this for now the, the first thing you need to do is this initial Gantt chart and that's how I would do mine there are other ways to do this and I might show a different way in a different video